very hard act to follow. <laughs> I wasn't sure if the introduction was part of the slide talk or not, so mine is extremely short. Hello, I'm Patty Lean. I'm a painter and I teach part-time at the University of Cumbria. <laughs> um, this first slide shows uh, well, quite a few words. I've got quite a few words in this presentation, but I'm not going to read them all out. Um, they're really for reference if people are interested in following them up at a later date. Uh, on the left-hand side are the words that sort of provide a backdrop um, to the ideas behind my work, okay? The sort of territory, if you like, of my work. Um, my work is about um, what it's like to be in an environment, okay? Um, <clears throat> how we remember it, how we look at it, and the gap between the images and the words, okay? So, um, well, I've just <laughs> um, got rid of the quotation I was about to quote, but never mind, you've probably all got to read it anyway. Um, first stop is for me is, is part history, um, <clears throat> which is the, the subject I, I, I teach mainly. Um, <clears throat> the, the old stories, the old stories about um, <clears throat> art history, about um, the landscape, just they, they just don't do it for me. Um, the old stories about how we look at the landscape in terms of Victorian, sublime, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm a very keen uh, skier, runner, hill walker, and I suppose I wanted to um, <clears throat> find out and explore what it's actually like to be doing these things as a woman nowadays. I, I tried this talk out on my 17-year-old daughter, and she said, oh, mum, get rid of the feminism and just put in the environment. <laughs> <laughs> so I think she's probably right there, um, although feminism is sort of part of the, the roots of my work, I suppose, in some ways. These are my two sort of theory heroes, Proust and Wittgenstein, um, both working with ideas of memory in, in different ways. Proust says it's a mistake to compare the images stored in one's memory with reality. Okay? Wittgenstein said something else. <laughs> <laughs> the limits of my language are the limits of my world. In other words, what we can't see, what we can't speak about. Um, memory transcribed into paint. I went to classes with Archie Sutter Watt, the late Archie, uh, for several years, and he used to say um, about the landscape where he worked, sometimes I go there and sometimes I don't. And for this, um, this echoes to me the words of T.S. Eliot about exploring, exploring to arrive somewhere. <laughs> I've run out of that slide as well. Um, a trip to Italy last year to the Etruscan Museum in Volterra absolutely blew me away. Fantastic place. Um, the, the, connectedness with life, the energy, the movement, the rhythms, the vitality, and I wanted some of that in my work. Um, oh, I've said what I was going to say about this. <laughs> 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 right, you can breathe now. Uh, fantastic things, top right as a sweat scraper. So, um, back home, uh, what is it like for me? How does it feel? Uh, why do I go running and skiing and all these things? Is it to do with, it's not competitive, is it something to do with endorphins, is it stress busting? I don't know why I do it really, but I do it anyway. Um, and I look and I draw and I make marks. Um, the photograph there of the funny shoe is, um, <clears throat> I've started making sound pieces running with a, a microphone taped to my ankle. And they have really, really helped to focus my painting in terms of, you know, like a, I don't know, a pigeon taking off, twigs underfoot, you know, the mud splashing, etc., etc. And that has helped to transpose my mark making, um, <clears throat> mark making in my work. Um, <clears throat> that's one of my drawings, top left there. And then Brett Whiteley, the Australian artist, talks about mark making, the search and the struggle, the spontaneous marks and the nerve endings are there on the page as visible proof and evidence of the experiences that we have um, <clears throat> been through. Um, <clears throat> you know, so it's not about nice and it's not about good, it's about this sort of experience of, of, of mark making. And there's a little bit about <clears throat> marks. <laughs> um, so as one might warm up when one is going running. I don't do it often enough. Um, I like to warm up when I'm going into the studio um, with these mark-making exercises uh, where I switch off my conscious brain and I just have a kind of idea in my head, a motif or something, and I just get down and churn out lots of beneath conscious level drawings. And I find they're not about being good or being self-conscious or trying to represent a thing. Um, they just helped me with my work. Uh, a quick look at a couple of older paintings, I suppose, that 
are the roots of the work that I'm doing now, windsurfers on the beach in Tyree, just looking at the, the, the <clears throat> luminous sand, the cutting wind, the sand, the cold, the water, um, <clears throat> all that sort of thing. I mean, so this painting was informed by um, a ski trip um, in the Alps, just when, just when winter was turning into spring and everything was kind of melting and liquefying and coalescing and the plates of the earth were kind of going <laughs> like this. Um, so it's, there's a lot of water in this painting as well. I take the garden hose to my painting sometimes. Um, an artist I look at a lot is the uh, contemporary American abstract artist Amy Silman. A uh, big chunk of quote here, I'm not going to read it to you, but basically what she does is she goes up to the canvas and she has a dialogue with it as if she was having a telephone call with somebody saying, hi, how's it going? The canvas responds, she responds in the moment, backwards and forwards, call and response. Um, <clears throat> and then it becomes something else, it becomes a painting. Okay, and she's surprised. <laughs> uh, and that's what keeps her going and I find that tremendously helpful as well. Similarly, the artist John Skinner, who um, <coughs> is uh, my tutor and now a friend, um, he lives in the south of France and for a couple of years he's now he's been working with a synchronised swimming team um, in the swimming pool, responding to um, the movements and the water and the wetness and all that sort of thing. Uh, he writes a lot about his work, so there's a big chunk of text again. I'm just going to pick out one bit that is important to me. He says, the painting becomes a subject, it's not about a thing, it is the thing. Okay? So it's not about copying, um, it's about inventing, I guess. Um, and and you know, John's question is, you know, what, what do you want your paintings to be like? You know, what do you want them to be like? And that helps you, I think, get through the next phase of the, the dialogue. So with all this in mind, back to Italy, these were some drawings I did out of doors on the spot. And um, they were a kind of embodiment, I suppose, of the museum and the, the heat and the, the, the landscape and how I was feeling and the new colours and all the stuff that was going on. So they're not pictures of things. They're all that stuff sort of going in and then coming back out again, if that makes sense. I was working with an agenda on that trip. I really wanted to put more light and air and movement and rhythm and space into my work. So coming home... Um, <clears throat> I then wanted to transpose this stuff to my own local area around about my house where I lived. Um, so, so these are sort of half drawing, half painting, new materials, there's ink marker in there, acrylic ink. Um, <clears throat> they were installed at Gracefield. I really liked the way they hung them with loads of white space, framing them, uh, sort of giving them a, a space um, <clears throat> to themselves. Very fortuitous red stuff outside the window. <laughs> um, <clears throat> next couple of slides are um, what it's like to be running in the woods in the winter, the kind of icy, snowy, all kind of twigs and stuff like that going on, the, the cold, etc. Um, <clears throat> these are all on canvas and, and just sort of really talking about <clears throat> uh, all sort of wintry stuff um, that, that's going on in the woods. Uh, a lot of scraping back, <clears throat> adding layers, taking back, taking forwards, um, sort of working, working with this kind of very slippery, greasy sort of oil paint. Um, and the next few paintings uh, after this are work in progress that I'm working on at the moment. Um, so it's... <clears throat> uh, these are bigger scale than what I've worked on before, the sort of big bits of canvas just stapled to the wall. And trying to sort of transpose um, the, the, the sounds, the sights, the impressions, etc., um, into mark making on canvas in this sort of spontaneous kind of way. Um, thinking of you know, the, the sounds, the sort of bird songs, the, the road that <clears throat> I'm kind of, the big sort of stretchy forest track that I go running up. Uh, and uh, just trying to find ways of, of uh, putting these things into, into painterly and, and visual mark making. Um, just, just, they're sort of half drawing, half painting, so they're just in sort of... Um, <clears throat> they're, they're works in progress at the moment. I can't say they're sort of fully resolved at the moment, but I do feel uh, 
that I'm very interested in tapping the seam, as it were. I'm, I'm really sort of fired up by the whole thing and enjoying very much sort of working in these media. Uh, so, so that's it for me. Thank you very much. <laughs>